We've got to catch a plane. Yes. We're going we're to go, if you can, I think it's a five o'clock plane you got. We're going to go real quick with our last okay. three here, and then we'll get you out of here just ASAP. The gentlelady from Wyoming is recognized. Thank you so much. Um, border security is national security, and the failure of the Biden administration to secure our southern border and uphold our nation's laws has created a situation where the effects of the border crisis are felt nationwide. The number of people crossing the southern border last year dwarfs the number of people who live in the state of Wyoming. Since Biden took office over 10 times, the Wyoming population has crossed the southern border illegally. Statistics from the Wyoming Department of Criminal Investigation show a significant increase in fentanyl seizures within the state. And in 2022, the Wyoming Department of Health put out a notice titled, Fentanyl Burden Growing in Wyoming, as the number of synthetic opioid involved overdoses deaths more than quadrupled between 2018 and 2021. This situation is simply unsustainable and it's untenable. Sheriff, you've stated that you have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly being a, board, a border county and working in a border county. Can you highlight for the committee where we were in 2013, 2018, and 2022 going into 2023 and how they might fall on that scale? Well, besides my collective statements I've made it during this hearing, I, I'd like to hit on many of the aggravated uh, attacks toward law enforcement that has not been addressed today. We've seen a border, I've always seen border issues in my 38 year career, but what I'm seeing now is something that I've never seen, where we almost every other car runs from us, they try to assault us, and this is that fight and flight syndrome. That's why um, we don't get the give ups. To give you an example, I'll give you a story. I got a deputy right now on administrative leave where he made a traffic stop at 10 o'clock at night on a vehicle. The driver got out, fentanyl was thrown all over the highway. The, the driver was non-compliant. Border Patrol came in behind my deputy to assist him because we worked so close with him. Uh, it turned into a physical altercation based on his non-compliance. There were three illegal migrants in the back seat that ran during this, added more confusion to the case for my deputy. As they got into the altercation to secure the driver, uh, they fell into the roadway. Uh, just as they get him cuffed up, uh, the deputy looks up within half a second, sees a car barreling at him, oh actually hits the suspect driver, takes him right out, rips him right out of the deputy's hand, kills him, the deputy and the car keeps going. We suspect it was another smuggler driver. That's an opinion. The deputy performed life-saving measures on the individual. Uh, medics got there, took over that. As the deputy went back to the car to check the trunk, which is standard, that's just what we do, open the trunk, a male uh, migrant that came across being smuggled illegally actually attacked my deputy a second oh my time. Goodness gracious. When I got to the scene moments later, the deputy made a comment to me, he goes, Sheriff, I don't know how to prepare for this. And I go, I don't know how you do it either. The bottom line is this is a day in Cochise County where the assaults, we had an agent that was attacked on a trail south of my area uh, toward the border. They took his, uh, the officer tried, uh, they tried to take his gun from him. Uh, one round was fired. They actually uh, took a knife, tried to cut the, de the agent's throat. My deputy, he fought him off for seven minutes before my deputy got there. The assaults were seen on, I've had deputies drugged by cartel drivers. I've seen them um, assault for no reasons and the threats. I had uh, the cartels across the line actually uh, come across. We had a couple of different sources. They're coming to my county to kill one of my deputies, a random hit. So this is, I could talk all day on this. I know you only got five minutes. Well, Sheriff, giving us that report and that information is incredibly important, and we're, we all uh, hold all of your, the folks down there in our prayers. Thank you, ma'am. One, one aspect that is important, important to remember is that President Biden has not only halted the enforcement of the nation's laws at the border, but he openly showcased his action to the world, which only further encourages this security and humanitarian crisis. In contrast, the Trump administration not only enforced our humane immigration laws, but it also made enforcement known to the world. The reality is, is that Joe Biden has enabled the largest human and drug trafficking operation in US history. The tragedy of that is, as Milton Friedman said, you can have either an open border or you can have a welfare state or you can't have, and you can't, that is just an economic reality. You can't have both. It is the poorest US citizens who suffer the most when the government refuses to enforce our immigration laws and secure our border with overextended services, lack of affordable housing, and suppression of wages.
This tragedy is not only man-made, it is government-mandated, which is a tragedy and a legacy of this administration that must be fixed. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Thank the gentleman. The gentleman from Texas.